In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the makeup tool in Aperti. We're going to start by describing every single controller and slider in this tool. And we're going to end up by looking at how to use this tool in the combination with the smart masking. So if you're ready, we are starting right now. OK, so moving into Aperti, where we are already in the editing module. And first place we're going to head to is the film strip, where we have a two images or two sample files. We have this lady here with a beautiful smile, one single lady on the image. And then we have another image with two ladies. And that will help us when we're going to be looking at using the makeup tool with masking. So coming back, just starting with this image here and a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to move into the description of the video. There will be a link there. Follow it, download the sample files and follow me on your own computer. So we have the first image ready. So let's head to the main editing toolbar where we're going to click on the icon of the face. Let's do that. And by doing that, the retouch menu will open. We have a masking option on the top, which is called people. And then we have a number of tools here. Skin blemish, face skin, eyes, mouth and the makeup. So the makeup is what we're going to work with. However, before we go there, I have a quick tip to show you. And for that, we need to go into the essentials tool. In the Essentials tool, let's just close everything. We're going to be going into the Color tool. And in the Color tool, we're going to be navigating into the HSL panel. And the reason is that I want to show you how you can adjust the tone of the skin. And to do that, we're going to be using the HSL panel and specifically the Saturation and Luminance panels. So when we select the Saturation, we're going to be focusing on the red, orange and yellow because generally those are the sliders that adjust the skin. So let's have a look at it. If I take the red and play around with it by increasing it, you can see that we're getting a little bit more color into the skin. Now, when you overdo it, she will look like she's sunburned. However, I think just a gentle touch somewhere around maybe 10 or 20 will work. Then let's have a look at the orange. Let's just slide it around. When we increase that, now we are really adding more orange to the skin. But again, you want to be careful. So maybe just going somewhere around 50. And finally, sometimes with some skin tones, there are some yellows as well. So when you take that and shift it around, you can see if this is the case and adjust it too. Now, additionally, when we again click on a drop down box and go from saturation into the luminance, we can again adjust the same colors. Red, if we increase it, we make the skin brighter. Or when we bring it down, we make the skin darker. Let's have a look at it somewhere around here. As well with the orange, when we bring it down, we make the skin darker or we can make it brighter by bringing it down. So let's say that we're going to go just somewhere around minus seven and minus eight. And with the yellow, again, there is not much there. It actually adjusts more the hair than anything else. So let's leave it by default on zero. Now we can quickly look at the before and after by clicking on the eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. So this is where we started and this is after. And this is a quick way of how you can adjust the skin tones using the color tool in the essentials panel. And the reason why I'm showing you this is to basically use the color adjustments and the skin adjustments as a base for your makeup. So this is like a global adjustment of the skin. Now let's close the color tool and back to our retouch panel where we're going to open the makeup. In the makeup tool, we have a number of options here. We have a blush, contour, highlights, eyeliner, eyebrows, and also lips. So this is what we're going to be adjusting. And to start with, we're going to go through all the different options here. Starting with the blush. Now with the blush, we have an option to go between cheeks and cheeks and nose. Now, what we're going to do first, we're going to actually take the amount slider and increase it all the way up. By doing that, we can clearly see what part of the face it's adjusting, where it's adding the blush into the cheeks. It's this red zone here. Now, of course, that you wouldn't apply that much, but by keeping it on 100, it will allow us to see what the other adjustments do. So coming back to our cheeks and cheeks and nose, well, as you guessed it, when it's on cheeks, 
the blush is only applied to cheeks and when it's on cheeks and nose, it will be applied all the way across. Now, I prefer the cheeks, but it is really up to you. Moving on, we can adjust the tone. The tone by default, as you can see, is set to 92. And looking at the color scale here, it starts from purple all the way down. And when you bring it up, it can be pretty much red. So it is up to you to find the right color. Now let's keep it nice and natural, uh, which for me, I think is probably somewhere around 100. Moving forward, looking at the other adjustments, we can adjust the width and height of the blush. So with the width, when we adjust it, you can see how each of the cheek get adjusted. When we bring it down, it gets a little bit more narrow. And when we bring it up, it gets wider. Let's reset it again. And with the next adjustment, well, we can adjust the height. Very simply, when we take it, you can see how when I bring it down, it's kind of thin. It's almost like a line. And when I bring it the other way around, it pretty much edits under the eye, across the cheek and all the way across down. Again, to reset any sliders or controllers, just double click on them. And finally, we have adjustments called X and Y. And as you guessed it, with these two sliders, you can actually adjust the position of the blush. With the X, you're moving the blush horizontally. And with the Y, you're moving it vertically. So up and down. Great. So that was the blush. Well, for the time being, let's actually bring it down to zero and move to contour. With the contour, we can increase it again. Let's go all the way up to 100 so we can see it. And let's have a look at it. You can see it basically adds the brown lines around the nose and also somewhere around here, around the cheeks. Now, anytime you see this little triangle in front of the tool, you can actually click on it and it will open additional options. In case of the contour, we can apply a little bit more feathering which actually works very well, because when you apply the amount to 100, you can really see the lines and it actually looks quite terrible. However, when you feather it, it looks much more natural. Well, something like this, right? Maybe 40. Well, that's the contour. Now we're going to bring it down, close it and move into the highlights. Again, there is a triangle there. So we're going to click on that and increase the amount to see the effect. Now with the highlights, you can see we get highlights around the cheeks, also just under the on the chin or under the lips and also around the eyes. Similarly, like with contour, we still have an option to apply some feathering to again make it a little bit more natural. So that was the highlights. Let's continue moving into the eyeliner where we're going to take the amount slider and again bring it all the way up. By doing that, now when we zoom in, we can actually see the color around the eyes. Of course, that we can adjust the color using the hue slider. Right now it's set to this red, but we can really shift it around and choose any color we want, like this green. Of course, we can also add some nice glow using the glow slider. And additionally, in the eyeliner tool, we can also enhance the eyebrows pretty much by taking the slider and bringing it down. And what it does, it adds some definition and also darkening into the eyebrows. So you want to be careful with it. However, just a touch of it usually helps. Now, finally, let's bring down the eyeliner, zoom out. And the last adjustment is called lips. And as you guessed it, by bringing the slider up, we will add a little bit of saturation into the lips. And again, since we have the triangle there, when we click on it, we can adjust the tone. So we are starting on that very natural pink red and we can go to the really red one all the way up to 100. And of course that we can also darken the color by taking the slider and bringing it up. So when you see when I bring it all the way up, it will be the really full red, dark red on the lips. So that's about it with the lip. So we can bring down the saturation and those are all the adjustments and options here in the makeup. Additionally, as you saw me doing it earlier, when you apply any edits, you can see the before and after specifically for this tool using the little eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. So before and after, and you can also reset this specific tool by using the little circle next to it. So nice and simple, right? Really cool way of how you can apply makeup to the person using the makeup tool here. Now, just before we going to continue, 
a quick reminder that today's tutorial is powered by our brand new Aperti Ultimate Guide. This powerful 106 page ebook guide is full of details instructions and covering every single tool and technique in this application. Now, if you want to find out more about it, you can use the link in the description of this video or head directly to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And just a quick reminder that if you get the ultimate guide now, you can get it with a special pre-release offer. However, as I promised at the beginning, we're going to use a second sample file and there we're going to try to use the masking and apply different makeup to different person. Because, as you guessed it, there could be different people, maybe men and women, or they could be also two women, both of them having different color of the skin, needing different sort of makeup. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into the people section and here we can choose different options. However, for us, we're going to click on individual because we're going to select individual person and apply the makeup specifically to her. So let's start with the lady here. We're going to select her in our masking and move into the makeup. Now, looking at the blush, let's try it. Let's increase it and see if we can apply just a little bit. Gentle touch, let's say somewhere around 35. Now, I don't think we need to adjust it in any way. I'm quite happy with how it's positioned. So let's move into the contour and let's see if we apply maybe just a touch. It will just create nice contrast and add a little bit of depth. I think also on top of adding maybe like 20 or 30, another good idea is to apply a little bit of feathering just to feather it and make it a little bit more smooth in the face. Moving further with the highlights, let's see if that actually bring anything to us. I don't think that we need to apply that, so we will leave it with the eyeliner. Let's add just a little bit. By bringing it up, we will add red, so we will adjust that maybe just a little bit lower to somewhere around blue, bring it down and apply some glow. The eyebrows, I don't think they need any darkening. The lips, maybe just a touch of saturation, and that's about it. Once finished with the first model, we can very easily scroll all the way up and select the second model and do exactly the same. Apply a little bit of blush to her cheeks, somewhere around here. If we want to be creative, we can add a little bit of purple. We can, let's say, make it a little bit wider if we want. Now with the contour, let's again apply some with extra feathering. With the highlights, we will also apply a little bit, but again with feathering. Eyeliner, let's leave that, but definitely let's maybe enhance the eyebrows just a little. And with the lips, let's just make them a little bit more saturated, increase the tone and just make them a little darker. Maybe we're going to bring the saturation down a little bit, but that's about it. Now, zooming back out and scrolling up, you can see that now we have selected the models. If you would want to reset the specific model and the edit, you could click on the little circle icon with the arrow on it, but we don't want to do that. What we want to have a look at is simple before and after using the eye icon at the bottom. And just like that, we have applied the makeup to a specific person in the image, being able to have a specific control over what we are adding and to who. So there you have it. This is how you easily use the makeup tool on its own or in the combination with the powerful masking all hiding in the retouch editing panel. Now, before we going to finish, just a quick reminder that this tutorial is powered by our brand new professional portrait LUT bundle. This brand new bundle is focusing on portrait editing and it will allow you to use the 170 expertly crafted LUTs to quickly and easily adjust your portrait photos. Now, this bundle is, of course, compatible with the Aperti software, but you can also use it with Luminar Neo, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Code, and so much more. Now, to get the best possible price for the Professional Portrait LUT bundle, simply follow the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And that's the end of today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and share it. And if you have any question about today's topic or about Aperti, 
then write it in the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss on any of our future content focusing on Aperti and Luminar Neo. For today, my name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.